Hi friends, this is Santanam from Smart Leaders IAS and in this video we will be looking at the editorials which came on the 22nd of February. The first article that we are going to look at is titled As the borders begin to close which came on the 22nd of February. So what is this article about? This article deals with the anti-immigration sentiments which are rising in the Middle East and in the West due to which there is a fall or a potential fall in remittances which is received by India and how the Indian policymakers should anticipate the uncertainty that is hanging over the remittances from abroad to India and how the Indian policymakers should be handling the uncertainties that is prevailing over the fall in remittances which is coming from abroad to India. Let's try to understand how important remittances are. Remittances are shown to have positive impact on developing economies. They have considerably increased the standard of living and have taken a lot of people out of poverty in developing or emerging economies. In the entire world, 23 countries led by India and China receive over 80% of all the global remittances. And specifically in India, Kerala receives almost 36.3% of its GDP as remittances from the Middle East. Now having said that, it is high time to note that across the world there is a growing anxiety and xenophobia against immigration and because of which migrants from countries are not being welcomed. And thus, the remittances which Indians from abroad send back to home to India might reduce in the future. Let's first look at the case of the West Asia. See, in 1988, Oman began Omanization, which means replacing the existing migrant workers with Oman citizens. And in 2011, Saudi Arabia started the Saudization, which is similar to Omanization, where the migrant workers are replaced by its own nationals. These are measures which are focused to demographically engineer the prevailing workforce in their countries. And why are they doing this? The reason is the youth population of these Arab countries, they themselves are facing severe unemployment issues and are very restive. They have already participated in the Arab Spring and other protests across the Middle East. So to counter that, the countries are trying to employ their own youth into the workforce and induct them so that they don't participate in any of these anti-national activities. This is not just the case with Oman and Saudi Arabia. It is also happening with all other GCC countries or Gulf Cooperation countries. Now let's look at the case of Europe and America. See, there has been a rise in xenophobia and anti-immigration sentiments across Europe and America. This has, been es this has escalated after the recent Syrian refugee crisis and it is because of these anti-immigration sentiments. Brexit happened and it was precisely the same electoral promise that Donald Trump made to tighten immigration to the US with which he won the election. Which clearly shows that the West is not really interested in taking more migrants from the emerging economies. So in this case, what should India do? Firstly, the Indian policymakers have to understand that and the rise in xenophobia or anti-immigration sentiments is going to spread across the West and we should come to terms with that. So consequently, this means that the remittances which has been coming from abroad to India is also going to fall. So there is only one thing left to do. Indian policymakers have to devise strategies to ensure that they account for such fallen remittances in their future policies. They have to find avenues where they are able to compensate the fallen revenue because of the fallen remittances with other measures and other activities. The Kerala Migration Survey and the proposed Indian Migration Survey of 2020 is a step in this direction. Moving on to the next article, which is titled The Nuts and Bolts of a Fraud, which also came on the 22nd of February. So what is this article about? This article explains how the PNB scam happened, which is worth 12,000 crores. For us to understand the scam, we have to understand the concept of LOU or letter of undertaking. See, LOU is a bank guarantee, which is given by one bank to another bank in favor of its customer. Imagine that there is a customer and that customer wants to purchase some good or services from a foreign company. And for that, that customer needs short term credit. And instead of getting the short term credit converted from the customer's own currency, in this case, 
rupees to the seller's currency which could be dollars or euros the customer approaches his bank for a lou and with this lou he is able to get a short term loan from another bank which is based in a foreign country and that bank provides this short term loan in dollars or euros instead of providing it in rupees so it is easier for the customer to buy products or services by using the euros or dollars rather than getting to convert indian rupees into euros and then purchasing it so this is how lous are used it is used especially in business terms and it is used especially by jewelers in india here you have to understand that this lou does not happen between a bank which is based in india and a foreign bank this lou transaction happens between indian banks present in india and indian banks foreign branches present abroad so this undertaking this letter of undertaking is the instrument which is used between the banks in order to assure each other that they will have the customers back that they will support the customers trade so using lou the customer is able to buy products from abroad and is able to run his business so having understood about lous you have to understand that this pnb scam happened with the misuse of this lous so before we understand how they misused it let's try to understand how they should have actually used it a lo is issued by a bank in this case pnb to an importer who is nirav modi the importer receives the money and pays his client to get unpolished diamonds and while this happens the issuer bank that is pnb messages the overseas branches of other banks through the swift network so once this communication happens between the swift net between one bank to another through the swift network the other bank lends the money to the customer in this case nirav modi against the letter of undertaking given by punjab national bank and the bank that holds the lou which is the foreign branches of the indian banks goes back to the issuer bank which is pnb and gets its due because they have lent the money based on pnb's lou so now they go back to pnb and asks for their money and the and pnb also gives the money back to the foreign bank to the foreign banks and then pnb recovers its due against the lou from its client so this is how it should have happened first pnb gives the lou using which the importer or uh, in this case nirav modi goes to the foreign bank and gets his money and the for, and then the foreign bank comes to pnb to collect the loan amount which it had given to nirav modi and after some time pnb recovers the money from nirav modi and settles its loan so this is how it should have happened but what really happened was very different corrupt lous of pnbs were issued to overseas indian banks as i told earlier these banks are not foreign based banks they are indian banks with branches in foreign countries they were allahabad bank axis bank and union bank of india having polished and used the imported diamonds modi should have raised cash to settle the dues against the lous which he initially raised with punjab national bank but the loan was not paid back at all instead of that with the help of two corrupt employees in pnb a total of 153 lous were raised just in 2017 and all these lous were actually raised in order to repeatedly roll over the loan which means new lous were taken to pay back the old lous so they kept on paying back the old lous they, which means that there was some form of transaction which was happening some form of repayment which has been happening because of which their names did not appear on the list of defaulters so this is how they frauded the punjab national bank and by doing all this they were able to scam to the tune of 12000 crore rupees this was very shocking the government and the rbi jumped in to make certain reforms immediately firstly as soon as they heard of the scam the government approved the fugitive economic offenders bill which gives the government to confiscate assets of the fugitive including binami assets of absconding loan defaulters like 
Nira Modi in this case. Also, RBI scrapped LOU and letter of comfort LOC because they believe that this is being misused even though this has been given in order to encourage uh, easier trade. Since it is being misused again and again, they have completely scrapped it. And all of this is an attempt to plug a loophole and improve banks due diligence in trade credit. <laughs>